There's, uh, there's so many things to talk about. Um, this week, I'm going to be talking about hydrogen because honestly, it really, really gets the evangelist going. It really pushes the buttons. And, uh, you know, I don't like lies. I can't help feeling, despite all you lot saying hydrogen will never happen, I can't help feeling it will. It really, really pushes the buttons. And it's quite funny because it kind of smokes people out. Um, in the old days, when people wouldn't tell you how much they wanted for you, for the car, there's a kind of a salesman in the old days when people uh, wouldn't tell you how much they wanted for the car or how much they'd do a deal at. So how much do you want for your car, Mr. Customer? Well, uh, as much as I can get. Okay, yeah. Uh, what would it take to do a deal? Well, you tell me. And you know, you could go, you could rephrase the question time and time again. And in the Pendle system, you were supposed to wait until, take them for a test drive in your car, and then wait till they're in a stressful situation, turning right across traffic, and then you ask them a question. And you know, you know when you get older and you're lost, so you turn the radio down? It, it's that. You, you, <laughs> your brain cuts off all the senses that you don't need and all the defences you don't need when you're in a stressful situation. So you wait till they turn turning right, and then you say, uh, and this guy's waiting for a gap, and he's in a new car, he's not familiar, don't want to stall in front of the salesman and make a fool of himself. So uh, you just wait till he's about to turn, and say, uh, how much you want for your car? And I say, three grand, <laughs> and, get, and get round. Or well, there's another way. So he won't tell you how much he wants. You don't know whether you're wasting your time. There could be another customer. I mean, you know, if you've got all day, if you've got nothing to do and all day to do it, then you, you can do the pendle system and, and work him and start off with a, a kind of lower offer and work your way up until you get somewhere where he's prepared to sign. And then you take the order form that he signed to your sales manager and the sales manager says, oh, do it for 500 quid less. So you go back to the customer and you say, I'm sorry, Mr. Customer, my sales manager won't sign off on this. The maximum we can do is four and a half thousand pounds. Have we got a deal? Again, stress, put them in a stressful situation. You'll see customers jump back. They don't, don't want to, don't want to shake your hand. Um, or you can forget about the pendulum system. You can get, you can forget about you can forget about putting them in a stressful situation where they're turning right across traffic. Because if you remember, you're sat in the passenger seat. If he has an accident, it's you that's going to get it, not him. He's on this side. So you're going to get squished. So forget all that. The better way is, just let me have a look at the guide. Uh, oh, yeah, well, yeah. Uh, your car's worth two grand. And they'll go, how much? I've been offered four. And, and then you go, what, what year did you say? I'm sorry, we'll give you four as well. <laughs> so they can't help it, they, you know, they blurt it out. Now it's the same with the evangelists. You don't have to give them a price on anything. You just have to say one word, hydrogen. And as soon as you mention hydrogen, all the evangelists blow the cover, jump out, they can't help themselves. God, oh, no, no, hydrogen useless, you, too, too much, cost too much, it's more than the battery electric vehicles the way to go. So of course, I'm going to be talking about hydrogen this week. So, hydrogen. China targets 4 million hydrogen vehicles by 2040 in bold new roadmap. This is November the 3rd, 2025 by Ben Gordon. China has just raised the bar for hydrogen mobility, according to China Daily the country's new technology roadmap 3.0 for energy saving and new energy vehicle outlines. Plans for a hydrogen fleet exceeding 4 million vehicles by 2040. The roadmap developed by the China Society 
of automotive engineers sets the direction for the next phase of China's transport transformation. It builds on earlier strategies from 2016 and 2020 and focuses on cutting emissions, improving efficiency and developing both battery electric and hydrogen technologies in parallel. Hydrogen moves from niche to national priority. Battery electric vehicles may still dominate sales today, but China's latest roadmap gives hydrogen fuel cell vehicles a far bigger role in the long term. The plan aims to scale from roughly 10,000 vehicles today to more than 4 million within 15 years, a jump that would make China the largest hydrogen vehicle market on Earth. Hydrogen's focus will be on areas where batteries struggle. Do they? Long distance freight, buses, heavy duty logistics and commercial vehicles. This approach makes use of hydrogen's fast refueling and high energy density, while keeping battery vehicles focused on urban and short range travel. Mm. Right, okay. That's not what BMW are doing and it's not what Toyota are doing. And, guess what? It's not what Saudi Arabia are doing either. You wouldn't think Saudi Arabia would be investing in hydrogen, would you? But they are. The roadmap sets out a clear list of targets for the next 15 years. Over 80% of new passenger car sales to be new energy vehicles by 2040. Carbon emissions to peak before 2028, falling by more than 60% by 2040. Hydrogen fuel cell vehicle numbers to exceed 4 million units by 2040. Expansion of smart connected and autonomous vehicle systems to improve efficiency and safety. Well, how do they do that? Keep crashing into bridges? I don't think so. To achieve these goals, China will expand hydrogen production hubs, build nationwide refueling infrastructure and promote industry collaboration across research manufacturing and transport sectors. What it means for the hydrogen industry, for hydrogen advocates, this roadmap offers something vital, scale and certainty. Government backing at this level almost guarantees a surge in funding, infrastructure and supply chain development. I guess they want to do to hydrogen what they've done to battery electric vehicles and start making them, subsidize them and flood the rest of the world with hydrogen vehicles. Challenges remain, of course. Infrastructure is still limited and hydrogen production costs must continue to fall. However, with national coordination, policy support and industrial investment, those barriers look far more surmountable than before. A global ripple effect. China's roadmap will likely reshape global clean mobility strategy. A target of 4 million hydrogen vehicles gives suppliers and automakers worldwide a clear signal to accelerate development. For the UK and Europe, this represents both an opportunity and a warning. China's scale could rapidly lower costs for hydrogen stacks, storage and fueling systems. Countries that delay building refueling networks risk falling behind as hydrogen mobility matures elsewhere. If China succeeds, hydrogen will no longer be a side project. It will sit alongside batteries as a core pillar of global transport. Final thoughts. China's technology roadmap 3.0 marks a major shift in clean mobility thinking. Hydrogen is no longer an experiment. It's part of the main plan. With the target of 4 million fuel cell vehicles by 2040, China has shown the scale of its ambition. Now it's up to the rest of the world to keep pace. So when I say about evangelists, and hydrogen. Let's just have a quick look. Let's see. Here we go. Colin Walker. A hydrogen car costs around 20p per mile to drive. A petrol stroke diesel car is around 15 to 20p per mile. EVs, they can cost as little as 2p a mile. Really, Colin? But. <laughs> as little. Buy as much as little. Well, no, they don't, do they, really? That's the best possible scenario, 2p a mile, where you can charge at home. But when you have to charge on the motorway, they're more than petrol. So let's, you know, let's get that straight. 
Now, the other thing is battery electric vehicles. I've seen a firm on LinkedIn that can actually adapt an ICE engine to run off hydrogen. Imagine the cost savings running a car that's already made, repurposing it, adapting it to run off hydrogen like we did with LPGs. I don't think you'll convert a battery electric vehicle from an electric motor to hydrogen. So if this happens, battery electric vehicles will be deader than flares. Here we go. Colin, expert in the motor trade. Rather than just build EVs, Toyota would rather A, try and push for alternative technologies despite being patently inferior, i.e. hydrogen. B, from climate skeptic politicians in the US. These distractions just allow competitors, especially in China, to streak ahead. Colin Walker, Toyota rethinks its bet on hydrogen. You can run from the laws of thermodynamics, but you can't hide. Why? Because compared to an EV, a huge amount of energy is required to produce and transport the hydrogen to power the car. And that all costs money, which means a hydrogen car costs a lot more to fuel than an EV. Four to five times as much electricity needs to be generated to move a car powered by hydrogen as one that has batteries. This means hydrogen cars will always be vastly more expensive to run than EVs, which is why hydrogen as a fuel for most road transport solutions isn't happening. Let's just remind ourselves who Colin is. I mean, you'd think he was a, an anti-hydrogen lobbyist, wouldn't you? Head of Transport at the Energy and Climate Intelligence Unit, EC, we'll go there, look. Energy and Climate Intelligence Unit is a non-profit initiative that supports informed debate on energy and climate issues. Not really informed debate, that is it. I would say that's showing us a little bit biased towards electric vehicles. Why? Why is it biased towards electric vehicles? Have you, have you wondered? Have you thought why? Um, let's go to another one. Everything electric. Those paragons of virtue who uh, fly all over the world telling people about electric vehicles. Here's a vitally important question. Why are we investing trillions in battery technology and not hydrogen? Why are there now 800 different EVs for sale globally and maybe three HFC cars that basically no one is buying? Conspiracy or economics? Hydrogen makes no economic sense. Everything electric, Dan Cesar, our full-time CEO and part-time presenter is not backward in coming forward. Ask him about hydrogen cars and you might even see sparks fly. Dan will be leading the debate on the ever popular home energy sessions at AU Everything Electric Show. Get your tickets today. Let's just see where that is. Oh, it's in Melbourne. Oh, I, did, did he get there in an electric vehicle, do you think? Did he drive there? How do you think he got there? Did he drive there in an electric vehicle on solar power? Um, no. It's do as I say, not as I do. And we've got Dr. Andy Pandy. Nissan led on EV and wasted their advantage. The Japanese car industry often considers itself as Galapagos and is highly influenced by Toyota. Toyota are belligerent on hybrid and hydrogen. And a part of this is a reluctance to accept the original Nissan narrative. Bottom line, Japan is no longer Galapagos and key parts of their manufacturing infrastructure will not survive if they do not embrace EV. Therefore, one should applaud Toyota's development of solid state batteries in an attempt to leapfrog back. I doubt the 2027 timeline for commercial reality, but I welcome their intention. I say, oh, oh dear. Toyota pauses factory construction. Is solid state battery doomed again? Just now a bucket of cold water was poured on the solid state lithium ion power battery, a topic that has recently regained popularity. Just this Monday, Toyota Motor announced a suspension of its advanced power battery factory project in the new Matsuama Coastal Industry Park in Karita Town, fuck, fuck you over, prefecture. 
In Toyota's original plan, this brand new battery factory was to be used to deploy its, its first solid state lithium ion power battery production line. This move would help this Japanese automotive manufacturer giant regain its industrial advantage in the new energy vehicle field with its next generation EV. You see, all this is very confusing for me because Toyota's all new Hilux goes electric, hybrid, and hydrogen, November 11th, 2025. This is driving hydrogen. Very, very interesting, this driving hydrogen. I, I would suggest that you have a look because honestly, all these people, these all they're doing is pushing battery electric vehicles and decrying hydrogen. But when you actually look at some of the things about hydrogen, I'm telling you, you know, Saudi Arabia targets a cleaner future with 10 billion hydrogen investment and neon mega project. Back to Toyota. Toyota has revealed the ninth generation Hilux, marking a major shift for its legendary pickup. The new model introduces battery electric and hydrogen fuel cell powertrains, aligning with Toyota's multipath approach to electrification and clean transport. See, that's what it's all about clean transport. It's not about battery electric, it's not about electric vehicles, it's about clean energy. So why do the clean energy people only want battery electric vehicles? I don't get it. I really, really don't get it. <laughs> In fact, when this vehicle's been announced, I see a lot of negativity about the range of this Toyota Hilux, saying how bad it is. But none of them mentioned that you could also get a hybrid and a hydrogen. Why would they do that? Announced in Bangkok, the next generation Hilux builds on more than 50 years of global sales. I mean, don't get any better, does it? Than one of those. Hmm. Who else thinks Toyota Hiluxes are really, really good? and tried to kill one. And I left our Toyota pickup on top of a tower block that was about to be demolished with explosives. time and time again, taking the model into an era of zero emission options without losing its reputation for reliability and toughness. Three powertrains, one Hilux DNA. Toyota's new Hilux range includes three key variants, a battery electric version, Hilux BEV, the first fully electric Hilux, the 2.8D 48 volt mild hybrid set to be the volume seller for the UK and Western Europe. Do you think it's going to be the volume seller because it's got a 48 volt mild hybrid? Or do you think it's something else? A hydrogen fuel cell electric version confirmed for launch in 2028. This multipath strategy reflects Toyota's global view that no single powertrain suits every market or use case. Therefore, by offering diesel hybrid battery and fuel cell models, Toyota hopes to match local energy infrastructure and customer needs while maintaining the Hilux long-standing quality, durability and reliability. Toyota is killing its solid state battery. What have we got there? Therefore, one should applaud Toyota's development of solid state batteries in an attempt to leapfrog back. If only we could get hydrogen going and use them in converted internal combustion engines and forget about battery electric vehicles. I can't help feeling, despite all you lot saying hydrogen will never happen, I can't help feeling it will. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye bye.